Hello there guys and welcome back to 3DFX which is the guy you're seeing right here is me all right so uh, what we are going to talk about today is my two latest uh, songs that I've been making my tricks um, I'm a trans music producer so I create uh, an EDM style kind of um, thing called trance and my category or subcategory of trance is actually uplifting trance so that's what i do and that's what i love so um anyway uh without further ado let's have a look at the first song uh, that i have uh so i'm working on bitwig studio and um the arrangement for the latest track is right over here you can see it it looks like this so I don't know for some people uh, this type of arrangement uh, would seem quite complex uh, but for a trans producer I think it's not really that complex you may see producer doing like three times more than this um, but a good habit is always when you produce music, make it as simple as possible. And that's the rule I always use. But uh, today what I just wanted to do, this is no uh, tutorial or anything like that. I just wanted you to hear uh, the track here on YouTube and see what I've been working on. So I'll just uh, play through the track now and see what you guys think. And if you like what you hear, uh, why don't you please, uh, I beg you guys on my knees, please comment on the video because um, it will be very nice to hear your input, both good and bad about it. So please uh, put your comment down there what you think is good or bad about it, okay? And also, if you like, give me a little like, that's fine. And that would be really great, you know, to help the channel grow and stuff like that. So without further ado, let's play the song, all right? Or there I have a little problem here I just need to mute my sh uh, pink noise channel it's a method I use for mixing so okay let's um, let's keep driving right <laughs> okay let's go here we go so this track is called tropical blizzard I will shut up now so I won't disturb you guys all right don't forget to leave a like comment
yeah, we like this. Hmm. Yeah. There we go, that's uh, a little bit of a abrupt ending, but I kind of uh, like it in some some songs, I don't know why, but uh, usually I always end my songs with some white noise going, you know, on in the distance, some reverb or something on that, uh, but uh, sometimes I just like the old school stuff, make it simple, like, um, like simplifying things, because uh, these mixes turn out to be so complex anyway. And I mean, you can you can look at this and see, uh, like now you see everything is in yellow here because I, what I do is when, when it's time to uh, mix, uh, I usually, like you heard in the beginning, that noise, this one, this is so-called a pink noise. That's not white noise, it's actually pink noise. That's why I label it pink with a pink color, of course. So, uh, Anyway, um, I, I tend to, you know, these tracks are usually all kinds of different random calls just to kind of know that what track is, you know, being put in so you can identify them. But, uh, and therefore, when, when I start to uh, mix with the, when I do the volume mix down, I always label my tracks yellow so I know that they're finished. Uh, and yeah, th that's the reason why everything is yellow here. So this is good, you know, to have that habit, so you know, so you don't accidentally start mixing something that is already ready, you know, a track that is already ready. So yeah, that's how it is. Um, and uh, yeah, so this is how the uh, arrangement looks. The whole complete song took probably a, around a week to make. Uh, and I, you know, I've gone from producing songs I, i've been producing for maybe 10 years or maybe more even but i i'm not the kind of guy that does it every single day so i'm not that you know good at uh, producing but if, if i were to do it every single day probably might have gotten you know better by by you know progressed uh, a little bit faster than what i've done and so on but anyway this is what we have yeah uh, it would be lovely to hear uh your um thoughts on it what you think could like what, what you think what would you like about it what you don't like about it so please if you have any form of uh, suggestions or uh, questions about it uh, please uh, leave uh, a um, leave a like on the video uh, but please above everything write some comments I would love to hear what you guys think so okay um, that about that and um yeah as you can see i have some very cool view meters here and this uh, mixer here i love it and i love the look of it looks uh, kind of uh yeah it look I, i'm not sure it's the most beautiful dot to work in but um I, I really i really love it because it's so practical and smart like it, it's super super practical and so an another thing with this bitwig here like every single track, MIDI track, and we have written my uh, music is, for example, if you go to the uh, the sub bass, you can double click that again. So you can see the bass is just uh, quite simple, like it usually is when it comes to. And then um, uh, if we click the synth here, you can see the arpeggios that I've written. It's this one, which you probably heard a lot of if you've been listening to this. And this one is smoothly uh, volume faded, so it goes very, uh, you know, long way. You can see automation happening here in the volume uh, department. Um, so yeah, that's how that's uh, set up. So, and that teases the air pretty well. I think it, it's nice. Uh, and if you do it carefully, 
uh, it's fine to have it quite a lot. As you can see, it's being used, this track is being used so much in the mix. And it still don't really get boring because it is so um, small. It doesn't take up so much space from from this, you know, this, this sound. Sound has a certain amount of space where you can, a limited amount of space where you can put frequencies and frequencies are sound, if you may know that. So, yeah, so it's very easy that makes it become crowded. But um, I've been doing it for a long while now and I'm not aiming to stop. Um, I absolutely love trance. It's something special with it. Um, it is in my blood. It has been since the first track I've heard in like maybe two thousand around two thousand. I'm forty two now, so I've been, you know, doing trans a while. So, yeah, okay. Um, I don't know. Uh, like, there's there's a ton of things you can talk about, but I don't know. I don't. I'm not sure if I have something of interest for you guys. For most people, may not be the type that actually listens to trans. Uh, but anyway, now you have seen a video of how a little scoop of how you know complexes can be a very simple brief look at it um anyway uh, it's no uh, tutorial explanation of it so yeah that's just what i wanted to show um you can see every single track has for example first off i use the tool uh, and that one is for putting everything in mono so if you have done uh, it at 100% width, it is stereo, and if you have it at zero, it is mono. So I put most of the tracks in mono, just because they say it translates better to um, different stereo systems. Uh, so I tend to um, I tend to always try to mix in stereo, and some other tracks you can even mix in a little. Uh, like less than mono so you have say 80% mono if there's 20% width so whatever it doesn't really okay so uh, now you know that uh, let's move on and the synthesizer I always use is a silent one and if if you are a beginner and want to be able to produce trans uh, trans music this is something I would definitely um, advise uh, get silent one because of one sim single simple reason and that is because there are so enormously many tutorials for um, that on YouTube and my secondary advice would probably be to buy Serum because of the exact same reason that there is so insanely many tutorials of it so it would be easier for you to find the the form of sound design or presets or whatever for, for that type of synth. Um, not because you want to be mainstream or whatever, or do, do what every other EDM artists are doing. Because you are you and you can create something unique, you know. So I'm just saying that like, it is smart to have popular software because there are many tutorials on it and, and that it can be gold when, when when you're trying to create the sound that you really want to do um, and not just you know yeah all right so uh, we're done with that topic let's move on to the next compressors I have two compressors I generally use um, I had my times in life like a couple of years um, I, I didn't use compressors at all because someone said like it, it kind of destroys the music and uh, that's that's a little bit of um i don't know what to say i don't want to say the word in cam but that's a little um what word am i going to use um that's that's um horse beep you know what i mean because um, compressors are um, good when you use them in very small, tiny amounts. And, and that's what's good compared to the regular volume. The regular volume is more smooth fading. One compressor gives you, you know, a little bit extra punch when you, right there when you need it. When you want something to stick it just a little bit, then's when you probably want to use compressor, in my case anyway. Some uses for side chaining, I don't... 
I don't do that like you could, but I don't do that because I have better tools in my opinion, much easier. I use the A1 trigger gate for everything like that. It's it's more, it, it's like a gate, but it has side chain also. And also use Cable Guy's volume shaper for that, which are really good. So, um, and then we have EQ5. Many of the tools are Bitwig's own. As you can see here is the equalizer directly from Bitwig Crew. So, to play and then look at this it looks like this and here of course you can go in and uh, you know tweak your EQ to your liking and like I have a few equalizers I have uh, first and foremost the best one that I prefer to use as much as I can is called uh, split split EQ and it's made by Eventide and was a little bit of a revolution when it came because it can actually split on um, uh, the uh, bands on the EQ uh, don't ask me too much but it's tonal balance and um, and uh, what do you call it um, something else uh, the, the treble of it, I think it was. Anyway, um, all right. So let's not speak too much EQ. But I have, tr I have, uh, let's say, I have a tree EQ. I have split EQ. I have mix room uh, by uh, mastering the mix, uh, which I can definitely recommend for like newcomers if 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 you wanna do that. It's just that for me, I think split EQ was more worth it, and it's not really hard to use. So split EQ is probably the best and. The best sounding that I've heard, apart from uh, what is this famous? Um, my memory is destroyed. I have so bad memory. Um, uh, Fab filter, yeah, the Fab filter one is super famous. Um, everybody's using it, uh, but I uh, actually went for buying Eventide's Split EQ, so I can highly recommend that one because I felt that one is easier. So. And also, I got it at a great price, so that was good. All right, here you have mix room. Uh, must be a super simple equalizer. It's so easy. You just drag it like backwards or forwards. So it's like a room where you all you have the space that the frequency is realizing. The only downside with mix room is you can't really go so much lower. Uh, I mean, it doesn't take the lowest of the bass registers, so it doesn't it doesn't cover all the frequencies. It frequencies mix room uh, it covers the the mid frequencies basically and the high, but the not really the lowest of the low. So it seems like it's a more marketing decision of them. They wanted to have it like that so they can sell another plugin, so, which is called Bass Room. <laughs> so yeah, um, I bought mix room, but a little bit I regret it because I, I feel I, I mostly tend to use split EQ. Just saying, all right. So that about that, um, compressors we spoke about, um, uh, EQ we spoke about, uh, here we have split EQ, just for you to see how it looks, it's so beautiful, right? So yeah, um, and here you have what I was talking about before I wanted, yeah, the transient, so the tonal balance and the transient, you can, uh, you can move here, so you can, you can either like a normal EQ, you can move them here like this uh, separately, or you can take the whole chain like this, or whatever you want to call it, in the tonal up and down like this. And it makes it so easy to mix. I mean, I don't even know this thing much more than I, I know I can drag these things here, and I know I can change the smoothness of everything right over here. It's just all I need to know. You know, I, I don't have to be a super expert in everything. Because you may think I'm like some of you guys, I don't know who's watching, but. Some of you guys maybe think I'm Einstein just because it, everything looks so complicated here, but you should really know how easy this program is compared to other software. For example, I would say Ableton Live and stuff like that. I went from Ableton Live, I used Ableton Live for like 10 years, and I've been trying a lot of our other software, but nothing has been like Bitwig Studio. So yeah, another thing I would recommend is to actually download this uh, plugin right over here. 
this is a dream. Like this is a gate um, VST. It is completely free, doesn't cost you a single dime, just download it. And his name is Alex Hilton. It took me many years before I found it, but when, once I found it, I used it on every single of my mixes because this one creates a rhythmic uh, gate effect because it's a gate, but it can also be used as a sidechain has actually presets for that. Uh, so it, it is just amazing. Uh, it's hard to explain right now. I have expert mode on, so maybe it looked daunting. So I could just click here. Let's see. Okay, I'm not sure if there's a difference between that and the beginner mode, but it should be a beginner mode somewhere. <laughs> All right. Anyway, that about that. So download this one if you you know want to have something rhythmically that really changes your if you're using trance because after all. A gate, it came from the word trans gate. So it was actually with trans music, they developed this thing. And, and yeah, this is the best gate I've ever used. All right, just saying, the easiest also, probably. Oh, yeah, that about that. I think I'm going to actually end the video now because you probably, most of you guys are not watching <laughs> until now. But I just wanted to show you this is my passion, this is what I'm doing. And I kind of aim to try to produce as much videos in the future as possible. I'm going to keep uh, making trance because that's the passion I love. So <laughs> for you who watched the first time, I encourage you again to like the video. Please, please, please comment on the video and tell me uh, what you like, or what you didn't like. And you know what? Uh, maybe there's something I could help you with. I don't know. Maybe beginners. Uh, maybe you are super professional sitting here laughing at me <laughs> for what I just have been telling you about things that you know much better. And that is possible. I think you should have a humble attitude at both uh, beginners and newbies alike because everybody is in the be a beginner in the beginning. So anyway. All right. Thanks you for listening to all my babbling and uh, I wish you a very good night wherever you are or day for that matter right here it is actually 1 a.m. and 20 minutes past midnight here but uh, that is the time when I work the best that is the time when I record often and that is the time when my creative creativity is the strongest I don't know about you guys, but that's what works with me anyway. Uh, again, thank you for watching. If you've been watching to the end, um, I wish, I hope you give me a like on the video. I hope you comment if there's some questions that I have, or if you have any suggestions or requests or whatever. Um, why don't you uh, put uh, some comment down below in the description? Thank you very much for watching and uh, I see you guys very soon. Take care from 3DFX. Over and out.